Hi guys, Blackbox here. Welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to talk to you about the so-called VLS, the lowest selectable speed. Now, By definition, VLS corresponds to 1.13 VS1G during takeoff or a touch and go. In clean configuration, this becomes 1.28 VS1G. On the primary flight display speed band, VLS is indicated by the top of the amber strip. Um, in this case, VLS is approximately 133 knots. So in this case, you can see that the VLS displayed on the primary flight display speed band does not equal to the VLS indicated in the MCDU performance page. The reason behind this difference is that these two values are calculated by different computers. The VLS indicated in the MCDU performance page is simply calculated by the FMGC with the inputs performed by the pilot. So if the inputs by the pilot are wrong, then of course the calculated VLS will also be wrong. Now in order to create some sort of redundancy, Airbus has implemented a second calculation method. The second VLS calculation is performed by the flight augmentation computers. Below 14,625 feet, the FAC calculates the gross weight of the aircraft via certain inputs like the angle of attack, pitch, thrust, airspeed, slat flap position, center of gravity, and many more. Now it is this value that is displayed on the primary flight display. Let me just uh, quickly demonstrate to you what happens when you switch off both of the flight augmentation computers. After switching them off, all of the characteristic speeds disappear, like the green dot speed, F speed, S speed, and also the protection speed band. So you can see that it doesn't matter what VLS is uh, present in the MCDU, the VLS which is displayed on the primary flight display speed band is solely calculated and displayed by the FAC, the flight augmentation computer. In order to maintain a 5 knot difference between the VLS and the V approach speed, there might be cases when you, as a pilot, have to change the V approach manually. In the example shown here, we can see that the VLS displayed on the primary flat display is about 133, whilst the VLS in the MCDU is 131. The V approach, which is displayed in the MCDU, is calculated by a certain formula. It is the greater of the two, either VLS plus 5 or the VLS plus a third of the reported tower headwind component. As long as the reported tower headwind component is less than 15 knots, the approach will be VLS plus 5 knots. Let me demonstrate you this. At the moment, wind of 060 at 8 knots has been put into the MCDU. And so the V approach presently is 136 knots. When I change this to 080 at 45 knots, V approach now equals VLS plus 15 knots, i.e. a third of the 45 knots headwind component. Okay, let's put in 080 at 21 knots. And you guessed it, the V approach now is VLS plus 7 knots. Since the minimum V approach is VLS plus 5 knots, i.e. 136 knots in this case, if I put a wind in at 080 at 8 knots, the V approach will not go below the VLS plus 5 knot limit. This is, as I said in the beginning, to maintain a certain buffer between the VLS and the speed. Okay, so the V approach, which is uh, calculated by the FMGC, is displayed on the speed band by the magenta triangle. However, the VLS shown on the speed band is calculated by the flight augmentation computer. Now, if for some reason this calculation 
brings out a VLS which is somewhat higher than the VLS calculated by the FMGC. The displayed margin on the speed band between the VLS and the V approach will be less than 5 knots. In order to maintain the 5 knots buffer, we simply adjust the V approach in the MCDU by the difference between the two VLS values. In this case, the VLS indicated on the speed band is 133 knots, whilst the VLS in the MCDU is 131 knots. So there's a two knot difference. So we simply add two knots to the 136 and we'll get a new V approach speed of 138 knots. We type that into the scratch pad and put that in the line select key. And now we have uh, the five knot buffer again on the speed band. I know this whole topic is somewhat complicated, but um, that's just the way it is with the Airbus. But again, this shows how well the FS Labs A320 is simulated. Okay, guys, this concludes yet another video. Hope you liked it. And uh, as always, happy landings. I'll see you in the next one.